Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna make a video about how to learn faster. And all the ideas here are from Ali Abdal by the way. So if you wanna learn more or just simply wanna practice your listening by watching some native speaker speaking about a specific topic, you can watch this video. I will put the link somewhere out there and in the link to the description box below. Oh, and by the way, it's raining heavily outside. So sometimes my sound, my speaking, can be drowned down by the raining. So you have to maybe open the subtitle when you can hear me clearly. All right, so without further ado, let's get into the video. In this video, we'll cover nine tips to help you to learn something more faster and efficiently. So now, the first tip is sharpen the axe. So there are a, a quote from Abraham Lincoln that contributed his well-known is that if you give me six hours to chop down a tree, I will spend the first four hours sharpening the axe. Oops, so I'm sorry, axe. This quote can bring the power of preparation because preparation is really important not only for learning how to learn, but also for other skills, like when you play an instrument, like play the piano, you have to watch some preparation, like what you have to prepare in order to play the piano, and some guidelines and tutorials you have to watch in order to be master at you know, playing the piano. And the same thing is with learning languages. In order to learn languages, you have to figure around which language you will pick up and which apps or which classes you will attend in order to be fluent in that language. So preparation is as important as learning something. You definitely have to preparation and never look down on the step or ignore it. And the second tip is use crutches to optimize your focus. So what does that mean? It means that you have to focus on just one thing at the amount of time like you don't can you can just learning math you can learn math or do English homework at the same time except that you have to separate the two tasks and do it at the different amount of time like at 9 a.m. you do math homework and after doing math homework you move on to English homework but you can do it too. do the two tasks at the same time or it is called with another name multitask and multitask, multitask is either an efficient study method I have ever heard in my life because you, your brain can focus on two things at the same time. It just can, it just uh, like can focus in one thing. So never multitask. But how? But how you can resist the temptation? to be distracted when your TV out there, your Netflix out there, your phone out there. So I have two solutions. First is a, is a rule or a study method called the five minute rule. So basically, you will find yourself have difficulty in starting a new activity. And as a result, it will appear another problem is procrastination. So that way, starting is a solution right so the final rule is created in order to help you to overcome procrastination when you like a fret or when you don't want to or are not willing to start something so if you tend to procrastinate like me then this is definitely a life changer so first you convince yourself to do something maybe do your homework but you don't want to do it but you have to convince yourself to do it just for five minutes. You can use a set timer or your phone, but I, I, I suggest you use a set timer because your phone can be a distraction. I will tell about it later. So anyway, you use a set timer and you set for five minutes. You start and you do your homework for just five minutes. And after that, you are allowed to have a, to stop doing that. You're allowed to take a rest. However, more often than not, you'll find yourself actually want to continue doing that because, well, you know, I'm doing anyway, so I want to stick to the end. So that's a very effective because whenever I feel like I don't want to learn math because math is not my favorite subject, but yeah, but math in my country is still a very important subject. So whenever I feel like I don't love or I don't 
feel like doing math, I will convince myself to start doing it for five minutes, and then I can stop. I can move on to another task. But more often than not, I will want to continue doing it. So this method is a life changer for me. Or you can basically eliminate all the distraction that you don't have to use, like your laptop, your phone. You can put in another in another room, like your bedroom or your living room, so that you will. Not see it, like out of sight, out of mind. All right, and the third sedative is find opportunities for immersion. So, what exactly immersion? Immersion is like when you immerse yourself in some environment that will be using that skills. And immersion is also really important and effective for language learners like us. Basically, immerse yourself in that language as much as possible, and you will have the chance to be fluent in it. Well, I remember that I have read a newspaper about a sixteen, no, six, twenty-six year old man who be fluent in a language in just three months by immersion in that language as much as possible. He spoke to many foreign foreigners of that language and many native speakers. She he like listened to podcasts every single day of that language, and like he did literally every single thing in that language. He immersed, or in another word, he immersed himself himself in that language as much as possible. So yeah, if you're an English learner like me, especially English, you definitely have to check out this method immersion. So as it, as I've mentioned before, that we learn best. When we are surrounded in the environment that we will be using that skill, for example, if you want to improve your speaking, you can both speaking to yourself. That's okay, but hardly anyone can you know, practice speaking with yourself. Instead of that, you can try to speak with a real native speaker. That way, you will surround yourself with native speaker and that language, and you will become more fluent and become better in speaking. So that's the third. Five opportunities for immersion. All right. So now, in the fourth tip, finger around what your weak links are. So basically, you spend some time, just you know, fifteen to twenty minutes per day, fingering out what your weaknesses and try to fix it by at all costs. Or、well, you can do whatever you want. For example, your weakness is math. Then you can try to fix it by do many.、Uh, Take math more seriously, or you can do more math exercises in order to get used to the format or get used to that exercise. But you don't be afraid of failure because failure is the mother of success. And the fifth tip, which is my favorite one of all the nine tips I want to tell you here, is test yourself. So test yourself, as I've mentioned before in my. I remember, it, but in my videos, like nine study tips or ten study tips or something like that, I will put the link in the description box below if you wanna check out. I say that test yourself is a form of active recall method, which is a method, some methods that you will retrieve all your information by your brain, rather than just doing something passively, like if you're reading your notebook all over. Again, like twos or four times, or you highlighting, or you taking notes, or summarizing. That's all the passive learning. But active recall is more, you know, effective and efficient for students than passive learning. So, let's see here. If you read a textbook or learn something extremely carefully, like you definitely say for sure that you. Remember all of the knowledge you have just learned, but a week or so, you come back to revise it, and you realize that you've completely forgotten anything about that topic. Then, chances are you haven't tested yourself enough in order to retrieve that information from your brain. From your brain, like active recall will give your brain the chance to work and retrieve itself actively. Rather than passively. In fact, I have a video talking about some strategies you can adopt active recall in your studies. Like I will tell you a little bit about it. Like you can、um, t- 
test yourself is also a form of active recall or you can summarize or paraphrase all the new information in your own words or you can use flashcards as well mm, I will tell you more a little bit about flashcard in the tip number 8 so remember to stay till the end so that's about active recall it's really easy you just go to the google search bar and then you type active recall strategies for study it will appear a list of some activities you can use in order to use active recall which is the best method i've known about memorizing and for the long term so that's the fifth and the sixth tip is get intense feed feedback often so for me feedback is really important because feedback can you know identify which part i am weakness at and then from that i will improve more in the future for example if i speak to a native speaker and then that native speaker gives my, me feedback about my pronunciation about my intonation about my how i use vocabulary or some other mistakes and then the next time i will know exactly what i have to improve and i won't repeat or make that mistakes again so really important feedback is really important it is like the assessment of how we learn things and how we use improve or how we will improve it in the future so get intense feedback often and i think that we should focus on the feedback that are not good i know that some feedbacks may be really cruel and mean to you like when you are drawing and other people like oh my god you're drawing so bad it's so terrible you don't have anything good at drawing just give it up and you will be really upset or disappointed by that uh, criticism but believe me that criticism can help you to improve some aspect like you can ask that person so what do you think about my painting and that person can give you some ideas that you can change your drawing in order to make it better so don't be so upset about the criticism instead of that you just happily and positively accept it and change yourself in the future is better than just upset and disappointed cry your eyes out because someone is so cruel don't do that all right and the seventh thing is over learning so for me over learning is also really crucial because for example if you learn a topic in a textbook maybe about um i know but you can learn about atomic for example in chemistry and you just stop learning in the text in the textbook but you don't learn it more maybe on the internet or in depth or in details then you'll limit yourself from learning more instead of that you have you have to always ask yourself like why why that things happen or why that things like you ask yourself in why type questions for example you ask about atomic you can ask some questions that have the why word like why atomic is important to our life or why why um atomic is function like that and then you can ask your teachers or your friends or you can search it on the internet like literally every single thing you can find and you look look for on the internet so over learning don't stop yourself just learning on textbook or something that necessary learn something more in depth or in details it also overlearning is also an active recall method by the way all right and the eighth tip also my two favorite study technique is spacing or another word which is more familiar with us is space repetition so what exactly spacing spacing is when you like for example you learn some new vocabularies from your textbook and like if you don't revise it regularly for example you learn it in the one day and you don't revise it the next few months or the next few years then i definitely say for sure 100 percent that you will forget all of it and it will become the new words whenever you come across it so how exactly to solve that then um here is the forgetting curve really important it says that you will forget at least 50 percent of what you've learned after 24 hours without revising so instead of interrupt that forgetting curve you have to use space repetition or spacing method 
space repetition actually really easy. It is like you revise something regularly. Like instead of not revising your new words, you have to revise that new words. Like for example, you can revise it the next day, the next three days, the next month, six months later from now on. So that's the space repetition is that you spend spacing for that information in your brain in order so that your brain can remember it more. And an app that I normally use for space repetition in form of flashcards is Anki. So Anki is a very well-known app about you know, uh, space, space repetition and about flashcards. It's specifically for learning new words. So if you want to learn more about how to use flashcard on Anki, you can check out more about the course of Ali Abdal about some ultimate instruction and tutorial of using Anki on Ali Abdal on Skillshare or you can watch it on YouTube. There are plenty of videos talking about the tutorial of using Anki. Alright, so that's about space repetition. And last but not least, the ninth technique which is really super important is teach others what you are learning. So, I remember that there's a quote about this, but I don't remember it anymore. It, it is like, if you confidently tell yourself expert at something, then you are, you need to be possible to teach others about it and answer all the questions that others are asking you. For example, you learn, you like definitely or confidently, you know all the information of atomic and you teach your parents or your siblings about that atomic. But if your parents ask some questions that you don't know the answer is, then chances are you are not yet perfect or master at that topic. Instead of that, you can write down the questions and then you look up later. You can ask your teachers or on the internet. So teach what other learning in order to bring around whether your master or you understand everything you have to remember about that topic or not all right so that's all about i have just covered with you nine tips to help you to learn something more faster regardless of skills or information or you study for exam you can also apply all the tips i just tell you i just told you about so let me just sum up from the video. First is sharpen the X, the power of preparation. Next, it use crutches to optimize your focus. Three, it find opportunities for immersion. Four, is swing around what your weaklings are. Five, test yourself regularly. Six, get intense feedback often. Seven, over learning. Eight, spacing, space repetition. And nine, teach what you're learning. So I hope you find something that useful in this video and I'll see you very soon, definitely tomorrow. And well, have a nice day and bye bye.